Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think we are going to move straight on to the next part of uh, this discussion uh, concerning the availability of investment capital and how um, Greece might be able to benefit from this. And my, I am Tony Barber. I'm the Europe editor of the Financial Times. And my discussant partner to my right uh, is Nikos Stathopoulos, who is the managing partner at BC Partners in the UK, which is a, which is a large, very large uh, private equity fund. So, what I'm going to do is start off by asking Nikos to paint a, a, a broad picture of uh, world investment conditions. How, how favorable are they for uh, foreign investments and other types of investment around, around the globe, and then kind of home in on, on uh, what the outlook in particular for the re this region and Greece is. So let's go straight into it. Nikos. Thank you, Tony, and thanks for, um, for the Delphi Economic uh, Forum for inviting us uh, to be here today. I mean, 2017 is probably uh, going to go on record as one of the record years in uh, investing and one of the record years in M&A activity. Um, so uh, the market, the M&A activity in 2017 grew by more than 10% globally, uh, of which actually private equity represents almost a third of it. So our industry is investing significantly in this, uh, in this uh, time of period. The markets uh, seem to be very much risk on. Um, you can see that the phenomenon that uh, the markets seem to be very able to overcome uh, events. Uh, and in my definition of events are you know, elections where uh, Donald Trump was elected, and North Korean issues, terrorism, um, France and German elections. And despite all the events that are happening, you can see that the markets are, are willing to sustain those and uh, continue investing. Um, in addition to this, fundraising seems to be at its highest, uh, in, certainly in our industry that I'm familiar with in, in private equity. Investors seem to be allocating more and more dollars or euros in, in uh, asset classes or alternative asset classes like ours. And uh, only in 2017 alone, there was more than $440 billion raised in private equity uh, funds. Uh, currently, in private equity, there is more than $2.5 trillion that, have been, that are under management, of which, which is the most interesting fact in my mind, that $1.7 trillion of those remain uninvested. So if you combine the fact that you have $1.7 trillion in private equity uninvested today with the fact that the debt capital markets, which I'll come in a second, seem to be also very um, amenable to risk, you have almost the perfect storm in terms of investment amount available to uh, be deployed. The downside of this good story is when you have a lot of availability of equity and a lot of debt, that means you have valuations going up, and at the moment we are experiencing an environment where the valuations are probably the highest we have seen um, in, uh, in as long as at least I can remember in my 20 years of uh, investing experience. Having said that, I think the, the environment is it's certainly one where there is a lot of liquidity, and we'll come and, and discuss it in a second, but I think there's, this liquidity has, and we have to find a way as a country to channel it to this country as well. But there's certainly a lot of money around. Well, the sums you describe uh, sound uh, you know, extremely large indeed. Uh, and yet you said they, they, you described them almost as being uh, kind, of, kind of dormant, um, if that's not too strong a word. Is that because there simply aren't enough uh, opportunities that are regarded as, as as sensible risks to, to take, or, or what is the explanation for this this enormous pile of of money? You described it as 1.7 trillion dollars, I think. It's uh, it comes our, our industry, and I think investing overall is a cyclical game, and you do have periods where you do have too much capital chasing too few deals, and in my experience, this is this is one we're experiencing now. 
There is, uh, we are in a cycle where the availability of capital is more than the investment opportunities that people can, can identify. Uh, certainly in, uh, in Europe, but I think in, uh, the phenomenon is also in the US. Um, however, uh, investing uh, means that you have to try to find opportunities, and I think people are becoming increasingly creative in identifying uh, sectors or um, types of investments where they can deploy this capital. Uh, in an environment where interest rates are zero or close to zero, and even if they increase by a bit, which is the expectation, they're still going to be very anemic, uh, people are looking for yield. And when you look for yield, you need to find alternative asset classes, and you need to find opportunities. Um, yield comes with risk, and people should not shy away from the fact that risk means um, that you might get a bigger reward, you might get a downside uh, as well, because nothing comes free. Um, at the moment, I think the risk reward in some um, countries and or in some companies is more attractive than others. But there certainly does not seem to be enough um, opportunities for this $1.7 trillion of capital to be invested in one go. Well, that implies that the, the competition to attract some of these large sums of money must be pretty intense. I, I, I take it that uh, uh, you, you come across examples of this um, every day. Is there any way of breaking down the sense of competition by geographical region or by sector? I mean, in a country like Greece, I mean, wh who are its main competitors? Is it possible to, to kind of simplify things a bit like that? Or does it have to be broken down by sector or by...? Uh, unfortunately, it's very difficult to, to, um, to break it down by, um, by sector or by country because the availability of capital is global. Uh, my experience is that economies which are growing faster, and at the moment countries like Germany, for example, um, or even some southern European markets like Spain, who came from a slower period of growth, uh, tend to attract more capital and tend to be a bit more competitive. UK has been a market where because of Brexit, people have taken, I would say, a pause at the moment. Uh, they're pausing to understand whether this uh, Brexit uh, phenomenon or event uh, how it will pan out, and before that, I think you see some uh, some more um, quiet activity in the UK. I think Southern Europe, given the um, growth that it's experiencing, is now attracting increasingly more capital. You see this in Italy, which in the last couple of years has picked up a lot in terms of investment pace. Um, they have some important elections on on Sunday coming up, so let's see if this is going to change at all. The the dynamic in the country, but certainly I would say um, southern European markets are picked up because they come from a slower, from a slower period of, uh, of growth. Um, I think Greece could, could get into that uh, category. It, it could and it should, and we will talk about it, but I think Greece may have a unique opportunity at this moment to get out of um, the crisis that it experienced over the last few years and, and get some of this capital allocated to it. Well, well in, a, in a nutshell, what would be the two or three factors operating in Greece's favor in terms of attracting some, some of this investment? Let me start, let me start by saying that um, investors like myself and, and a lot of my peers do not invest in countries, they invest in companies. And uh, it's misleading if people feel that we're, we're making investments because we like a country in particular. We think the dynamic in the country is very strong, so therefore let's try to buy whatever moves in that market. However, um, since the Euro crisis started and, and since other events have happened in the world, people are, are, making, um, are taking more uh, stock of uh, the macro events in a country. I think uh, when people look at investing in Greece, they will look at uh, the risk reward. And the risk reward can be a factor of, of many things. Certainly, in, when you invest in a company, you have to look at the, about the characteristics of the company. And the company itself has to have at least certain basics um, for, to attract foreign investors. And this could be that it operates in a market that is growing. It's, it's not as cyclical. Um, the business is a market leader, there are high barriers to entry, it generates cash. Certain basic things that people will look at any business um, and they will try to invest. 
Now, the, the paradox here is that we're talking about the amount of capital that it's around, but at the same time, uh, people have a choice on where to invest. And it's difficult to see why a country like Greece should be able to attract investment uh, when people can invest in, in other markets. For me, there are two or three reasons why I think this country has an, a unique opportunity at the moment to do so, which has not been able to do in the past. One is, going back to my risk-reward argument, that um, I believe the valuations are more attractive in Greece today than there are in some other markets. And, uh, and given that investors are not the Red Cross, they're trying to make some capital gain from investing in, in, um, in companies, they will look into uh, identifying opportunities where they feel the risk reward is attractive, and therefore investing in businesses with attractive valuation is, is, is a big thing. The second thing, and I've experienced this in all three investments that I've made in this country in the last decade, is that it has excellent management teams. Uh, the people in the country and the management teams, be it in research and development, in managerial positions, in sales and marketing, in any function of businesses that at least I've been familiar with, are uh, um, the best that I have come across in Europe. And therefore, when people invest behind businesses, they also invest behind people. I tend to, to, to say that we don't only, we don't back uh, um, uh, horses, we back the jockeys as well. So it is very important that this country does have a lot of, of uh, excellent uh, management um, uh, organizations. But in my mind, the most important thing of why Greece should be able to attract investment now is timing. And in investment, timing is, is absolutely critical. Uh, in my experience, I, I tend to say that you know, the difference between a good business and a good investment is actually timing. You can very much invest at the wrong time buying the right business, and either because the country has gone away from you or the business has gone away from you, you may not be able to make a return. I think the timing to invest in Greece could be approaching if it's not now, because the Greece is coming through a recovery period. I think the dislocation that this market has experienced over the last few years is uh, very interesting, and I think it will end up attracting capital. Uh, investors don't forget thrive on uncertainty. Investors like risk, and investors like imperfect markets, because when the markets are perfect, valuations tend to follow through, and the valuations tend to be perfect themselves. So when you, when you, when you look at businesses and countries like Greece, I think the timing could be the most interesting factor why this country could be able to attract more investment this time around. Can you give us uh, an example or more than one example of a recent um, investment uh, from abroad in Greece that's, that's, that's sort of proved the points you've made, that it's, it's been successful and it's benefited from, from uh, excellent management skills and so on? I'll be very happy to do so, even though um, the founders of the investments are in the room uh, as we speak at the moment. But I think um, in 2015, um, I made an investment into a pharmaceutical business called Pharmathon. And uh, Pharmathon is, is a unique business in my mind in what it does because it's uniquely vertically integrated uh, and it has a unique model in Europe. Uh, it has, it's operating in a growing and consolidating industry. It had a very diverse portfolio selling in 85 countries. It had a very strong cash generation. It had a management team that was very experienced and, and seasoned. And it's one of these businesses where it had ex experienced organic growth over the last decade of more than 15% a year. So if you put all this into the bucket of, of criteria that you look to invest behind and add one, what I felt was a critical factor, which is the fact that 90% of the profits of the business were outside of Greece. And I will come to this later on because it's very relevant when you look at the types of businesses that uh, people will look at in this country. Then you had a uh, fantastic company that has been able to grow and weather the storm uh, of the crisis of the country and continue to grow very much abroad um, and, uh, and represent the type of businesses that I think we should be, we should be looking at uh, to invest in this market. Is that, is that, I want to pick, up, pick you up on that particular point about um, 
uh, the company being uh, uh, good at finding export markets. Is that, would you say that's almost, almost essential or, or is it just a, um, important but not absolutely vital? I would say, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's extremely helpful because the market, the Greek market is a small market and, and it will always remain a small market. It, we're, we're a small country, we're, we're a very proud country and we're, we're great people, but we remain small. So in order to scale businesses, you need to find ways to expand outside of the market. Um, I hear a lot of examples of, of companies in our country where they, they find uh, a way to sell their products or goods in other countries. They find other channels of distribution, etc. In my experience, the most successful businesses are the ones that are the most scalable businesses. And scale comes with technological advancement, advancement. It comes with research and development. It doesn't come necessarily through bricks and mortar. It doesn't come through specific um, packaging or what have you. And I think that's where the greatest opportunity comes in this country, where the, I think we should invest very much behind technology, we should invest behind um, research and development, because that gives scale. And this country, with the brain power that it has, and I think it has a great opportunity to do so. Now, a lot of people um, considering in, in investments in, in Greece would say, that uh, either through direct experience or from hearsay that uh, they have concerns about the overall kind of administrative framework, the, the, whether the right kind of laws are in place, whether they get implemented and so on, whether the, whether the uh, uh, court system is, is if smoothly running and so on. Are these, are these factors so important that they act as a real deterrent or are they something that uh, is balanced out against other, other factors when a person's considering making an investment decision? I'm afraid to say that they are important. And um, I've seen in the last few years that there have been some positive developments when it comes to, to some of the bureaucratic um, issues that this country has been facing for forever that I can, I can remember. There's been, been more speed in setting up businesses, etc. But I think a foreign investor really needs to see that there is stability, uh, that there is um, a really friendly economic environment that is very pro-business and it's pro-investment. And, and that includes tax, includes legal, includes fiscal, it, it includes political. You need all the elements to factor. And the only thing that people are, are, are trying to, to make sure that it happens, and I think that's the, what the, the government and, and the state needs to provide. The only thing that the state, in my mind, needs to provide is the right environment. And, and that, if the right environment is provided by the state, because of the reasons that I mentioned earlier, you could see investors coming to invest in this market. I think Greece needs to grow. And Greece needs to grow not by one or two or three percent. Greece needs to know with a very strong growth rate and sustainably so. And this growth needs investment. In a country where our savings rates are low, in a country where the, the state, because of its tight public budget, cannot support the businesses, in a country where the banking sector is handicapped today, the only source of this investment, in my mind, is going to come from foreign investment into the country. And investors to invest need confidence. There is nothing easier for somebody to be able to pull the trigger in investing than being confident to do so. Nobody is making an investment saying, I'm going to make an investment and I know I'm going to lose money. They need to have the optimism and the confidence to make the investment and, and, and make money. So I think this is... Um, very important. Uh, I think the country really needs to put all these issues hopefully behind it. It will take time, but I think if you create this environment that is very uh, conducive to foreign investors, um, there is so much liquidity out there that it would be a real shame in my mind that this country doesn't take its fair share. Okay, I'll, I think I'll just wrap up with uh, I'll just wrap up with one last one last question on this point. Do you think the the, the message has gone at the, these points that you've been making in the last twenty minutes or so? Do you think the message has gone out clearly enough to potential investors 
uh, in Greece um, around around the world. Do you think that they have had it brought to their attention that there are there are some upsides to to the situation? I mean, you mentioned the the management ability, the the valuations, the turn of the cycle, as it were. Um, it, I, I don't know if it has gone uh, quite, but I think even if the message goes through, one thing that I think our country still lacks, if I'm very honest, is the credibility of the messaging and the credibility of delivering everything else that we discussed. The moment the market um, and the country uh, gets back its credibility, um, returns to the regularity, I think regains all the self-confidence and the optimism, I think once this has happened, investors will look um, back into Greece. I think there's a lot of talk that I've heard from many, uh, almost every year, that we need to attract foreign investment. There is a willingness from a rhetoric perspective that the country needs to get more investment into, um, into Greece. Um, it hasn't happened, and the reason it hasn't happened is because there's still a skepticism in terms of the credibility of basically the environment to be conducive to foreign investors. And I think if there's one thing that I will encourage people to do is to make this country more business friendly because the money is there and the money can be attracted now. Um, and it would be a real shame if, uh, if this country doesn't get any of it. Well, thank you very much. Uh Nikos Tathopoulos, that's, uh, that's us wrapped up, and uh, let's give him a round of applause.